Virgo, thank you for joining me and welcome to my channel. This is your reading for Vimeo for February 2019. You can watch the whole video in the description down below um, on the Vimeo channel. Um, I'm going to explain the court cards here in a minute. There's only a couple, but they're important, so we'll talk about this now. And if you're interested, I also have all your videos in the description on the Virgo playlist, as well as on my Android app av available through the Google Play Store. Hey girl, hey. So go check it out. It has all the updated videos for your sun, moon, and rising. So I really like it. I think it's great. And I put out a lot of videos, so it, it, those videos are constantly being updated. So you'll see all your videos on, on the app. Okay, so... Um, uh, for February, I'm going to do the Vimeo reading, and then I'm going to do a love special on Vimeo. It's going to be an astrological overlook, excuse me, an astrological overview of 2019, and um, that will be available in your Vimeo package for the buy all option. Um, I, just a little caveat, I am going to publish that video in March in about six weeks. Um, on YouTube so you'll be able to watch it here if you don't want to get the Vimeo but if you want to then that's a way to do that so let's talk about this reading what we're seeing here is um, not too many court cards here I feel like you're dealing with like a panacea of people you're dealing with like a whole group of people like a big giant blob and it feels like the feminine energy is very supportive very soulmate like supportive of the new direction that you're taking and uh, just really really friendly so the women in your life are going to be dope and the women and the f uh, female energy feminine energy in your life is going to be really really solid whereas the masculine energy is going to be wiling out a little bit and I feel like the masculine energy is going to be so bothered because in some way you are assuming a certain role a certain degree of power and I feel like that is going to make them nervous the 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 power that you exude or that you feel so you they may need to adjust I don't think it's a totally forever sort of thing I think that basically all these um energies that are around you just need time to adjust there's there's a shift going on you're at the center of it and I think that they need to get their head around what's going on so they respond well and it's going to be in all areas of your life not just one person or situation socially I feel like you shouldn't trust the things that you're being told I really think that at this time there's this kind of glob like I said a panacea of energy and it's all like a big big mist you know that you're you're exposed to and so it might feel very convincing but trust me it's not and especially anything that kind of encroaches on how you should be living your life or how you are experiencing things that this is not the energy for it I'll explain in the astrology just how strong Virgo's month is in February but let me tell you I think a lot of this has to do with the fact that the month of February is sort of a mixed bag for some people for other signs and in fact for many it could be quite challenging because of the placements of the transits for Virgo it's actually really strong so I'll show you guys in a minute about that um, so the first court card that came up was in the third row and we have the king of cups hey girl hey uh, a Pisces cancer Scorpio Sun moon or rising man or woman this is fire and water okay so we have fire and water energy and so this is this is spiritual when this is when someone elevates their emotions to a spiritual level so they may feel a certain way about things but they see things from a higher spiritual perspective and so I feel like they have the ability to elevate they have the ability to elevate their opinions their uh, subjective judgments and raise them to a higher vibration 
and so therefore they're able to act in a compassionate way towards others um, you know this is like a controlled fire this is positively aspected only po uh, positive cards I think he's gonna in some way make things fair for you this month or help you make things fair in particular there's a really good chance that he's connecting with a king of wands who he's either fa helping you phase out of your life whether he's intending to or not or he's actually negotiating with this king of wands to get his lecherous claws out of you. N n low key, it's the truth. I feel like this king of wands, a Sag Leo or Aries, fire and fire, not so positively aspected here. Um, I don't think he's a bad guy. I just think that essentially he is, um, he is very, it's almost like someone who has a lot of power, who cannot be questioned in their own mind and he could be very young he doesn't have to be old so this is like someone who is so self-righteous or self so so self-confirmed that you know he almost thinks that he can direct things for other people and how to lead their life he's he's the moral judge you know he he feels himself to be the moral judge and maybe he has a bit of a station in life that allows him to do that much of the time so he could be a boss, he could be, you know, um, he could be your father, heck, you know, just, or he could be someone else who is going, who is around your life. This is, or someone who, like, for example, let me give you an example of what this looks like at an extreme. This is someone who may have been brought up in a wealthy family, every, with helicopter parents, those are the type of parents that kind of hover around a person as they're growing up, assuring everything is perfect. This is a sheltered man. Man, mama's boy this is this is the man who's gotten everything he wanted when he wanted it and he was confirmed in every single direction that the decisions that he was making were right so it was a real like uh, how could you if if he if someone stood in opposition to him when he was a boy and he grew up in this environment in which there's just nothing he could do no wrong. The golden boy, the golden child. So I feel like it's maybe some, that's an extreme example of this, but, um, but I feel like you're dealing, you've been dealing with this person who in some way has a friendly presence, friendly presence in your life. However, I feel like it's either they hold this opinion or they're, they've been, th with them comes an opinion that's distracting to you. And I feel like these, these social issues that you're wading through ha are a reflection of the primary relationship that you um, are experiencing with him. You know, so he is the, he is the vortex. He is the black hole that is sucking up. He is the energy vampire. And he may not be a bad person, but it's that conviction around him. You have to be the way that he thinks you are, right? You don't get to be free. So it's, it's a very subtle thing, but it's very toxic. And I feel like maybe some of these things that you're dealing with in terms of your social life are your social life is now confused because he's, he holds his opinions. It's like he, it's this smugness. This, this this smugness that he has towards everyone around him and for whatever reason he's kind of latched on to you so let him be smug let him do whatever he's not going to mess with you and in this position he's on his way out either the king of cups is going to just really push him out or um, or there's another situation or there's an improvement in a situation but your goal is not to be sad this position it's just saying don't do this don't, don't be sad about this. In fact, this is the card that's really confirming, which is the Fool. You're beginning something new and it's good. So that's it for the court cards. We have the Emperor. I kind of got into the reading a little bit more. If you want to see more, then go to my Vimeo. It's not a bad month at all. It's, it's more about Emperor represents like you taking power over things. And if you're a woman watching this, then of course the guys are not going to like it. You know, like there's this, and I'm not like a super feminist, you know. Well, I guess I am. I don't know, whatever. But the point is that like when you assume a lot of power in your life, some men are still going to be, and women are going to be socialized to want to take it away from you or feel a way about it. So don't let them do that. 
don't fall victim to that kind of mentality. It's everywhere in society, right? It's it's the sabotaging women. It's the women who shame because they just they morally morally attack whatever. So and it's the men who who create glass ceilings, all of those things in all aspects of our lives. So this is your chart for February 14th. We're only using one chart today. And first we're going to focus on this area as I start picking your cards for the tarot reading at the end. We're going to do our manifestation game as well. So what we see here is Venus in Capricorn. And so Venus in Capricorn represents that uh, you are going to have a lot of loving energy to come in to the area of your passion, hedonism, joy, where you have been working through a lot of power to initiate in your life the type of life that you want. Over the last couple weeks, the sun, or maybe a month ago, the sun was in Capricorn. We had the eclipse in Capricorn. So there was a big reset. There was a big, like, you're not doing what you want, Virgo. Okay, well, let's clear that out and let's get going in the direction you want. And with that, with, with that comes a change in gears, right? A change in, like, you're changing gears, you're changing direction. And um, if you want to go a different, if you have not been living your life in the direction that you want, Changing gears will also come with consequences, such as you no longer will be able to do something in order to get the big thing you want. You've thrown your energy into what you want, and the consequences will be that certain things that don't contribute to, to that direction, specifically people, situations, also the things you do, are going to be on their phased out. They're on their way out. But Venus is here, which is really nice after the eclipse, because it's a loving energy. On Vimeo, I told you guys, Venus is like the vixen who walks into a room full, full of like really uh, like macho men and she owns the place and she brings in this kind of feminine strength into the energy. So it's like that six of cups and the feminine energy in your Vimeo reading. It was like that compassionate feminine, who cares what the guys think? Who cares that what the women think who are siding with the men? Because remember always that women side with men oftentimes in order to assure their own security. So the women, you know, um, gang up against other women in order to assure their security and convey actually masculine beliefs or a masculine structure. So in our lives, not to get too theoretical, but that's a common thing. So some of the women that are placed in really high government positions often convey even ultra-masculine, masculine qualities, and they can be very, very harsh to other women. So I feel like Venus coming in here is like just coming in and, and giving some really good loving energy to support you in the new direction that you're going, okay? The next transit is the new moon in... Aquarius. You guys have probably already heard me complaining about it. The new moon in Aquarius is going to be a tough one because it's with Lilith. It's in our sixth house. This is where Virgo energy gets sort of better um, because for us in the sixth house, it's been a, lot, a bit of a gong show on the daily. Like little things not working out in the way that we wanted them to. Technology problems, that's Aquarian. Um, and on the day in, day out, you know. So this new moon that happens 16 degrees of uh, Aquarius with Lilith, the sun and the moon, of course. I feel like on a collective level, it's it's a bit of a crapshoot. Uh, we'll see where it goes. We'll see how it happens. But I think that because it's in our sixth house, this is why it makes February a bit better for Virgos. Yeah, something might come up that's like really frustrating, like... I don't even want to say what, knock on wood, but there could be like, like mishaps. Mishaps is like, that's what I'm striving for. Um, not striving for, but like, that's what I'm trying to convey. I don't want to say it because I don't want to bring it into reality, but, but there could be like, you know, like stuff that you want to pull out your hair or you're frustrated by, but it's not like, I, I think it's more menacing or a nuisance than anything that's really tragic this in this house for example so if you're Le if you're leo you have this happening in your seventh house that's with partners those are fights you know new moon so be glad you're a virgo sun moon and rising 
because this new moon is going to be tough on everyone else, which means Virgos run for cover. Let them while out. Let them have their, all the other signs, let them have their moment and you just kind of coast on the low, but still like keep it low key on February 4th. I'll do a special for that as well. Mercury in Pisces on the 11th. Okay. So, um, the seventh house is partnership. You can see another stelium here. Stelium is a bunch of planets and asteroids in one place. So Mercury, v uh, sun moving into, uh, into Pisces on the 19th and Chiron leaving Pisces on the 20th. Hey girl, hey. So very good for partnerships actually for Virgo. And this is another aspect why Virgo's month is better than most signs because we have this emphasis. Neptune is like perspective. Like you, if your partner says something to you or you need to say something to your partner, Neptune's gonna facilitate understanding. So if it's something left field, there's a really good chance that there's going to be like uh, a acceptance of it. And Mercury is good for communication. Vesta is like natural abilities. Expect your partnerships to go well. If you don't have a partner, maybe this is a good time to take a look if you're, if you're looking for that or if you're interested. Juno, uh, the asteroid, is at the top of our chart. She is the wife of Jupiter. Speaking of singles, if you're single, this is a wonderful transit to put yourself out there and meet someone who's right for you. So this is a good energy. Um, at the top of your chart, you're manifesting that which you want and you have a predisposition to convey to the world the kind of qualities and attributes that you want in a husband or a wife and uh, or a permanent partner, whatever direction you go. Um, but you can convey those, you can convey those qualities and attract uh, the right type of person with this transit. That's on the 11th of February, okay? And then this is the last uh, reason that I'll highlight. No, there's two There's two more. See, it's a good month for Virgo. Uh, the other reason that why February is really good for Virgo is that we have um, Mars moving into Taurus and Uranus will move into Taurus very soon. Now, this is beginning our cycle of the Grand Trine. I've talked about this in your 2019 videos down below. A Grand Trine is an energy of all the earth signs. So the three earth signs are Virgo, Taurus, or Capricorn. And when they're connected, they create this super highway of positive energy. Now, if you have Virgo transits, you're the only sign that helps to complete this Grand Trine. And it's important because there is an emphasis on Capricorn and so therefore when the transit of Uranus and Mars move through Taurus this only gives benefit really strong benefit to Virgo because Virgo is uh, creating that triangle of earth energy very similar to the water energy on the lesser front with Scorpio. So if you have Scorp Scorpio placements you're an aspect to the north node and the uh, Piscean stelium. So those are the two signs that are getting like a burst of really positive energy, but Virgo definitely more because the power players are in Capricorn. They're not in Pisces. So, but on an emotional level, unpacking emotional stuff. So if you do have water signs, watch the Scorpio reading because I'll explain it there. I think I already did it. Shoot. But I'll explain it in uh, another video if I haven't already. But if, but I think I did, but this is like relationship stuff. So, so this is like, uh, you know, uh, really unpacking relationships, improving things. So if you have Scorpio transits, that's, that's really a good thing for you at this time. Okay. So, uh, back to Virgo, we have Mars moving into, um, your ninth house in Taurus. That's an earth sign. Um, Uranus won't move in to Taurus until next month, maybe April. But that's also very exciting. It's a long transit. Mars is going to be quick five weeks. And so it's going to create this mobility. Virgo, you need to go for it and, and screw what everybody else thinks pretty much. Um, and you're going to feel good. You're going to feel energized. And, you know, just from a personal perspective, I feel like it's better than it's been for a hot minute. I think it's, I feel like Virgo's, we've had our ups and downs, right? It's been, it's been gravy. It's great. But I do feel like, I feel like it's, I feel like it's been on a low since the Neptune opposition with, with Jupiter. 
That's, I'll say it. So like 2014, 2015. It's been energetically on a slump. And I think that this is like the, the, the real punch that helps Virgo get on top of their horse. And it's not about, it's not about like life drastically improving. It's that light switch of when you feel good and you feel energetic like a Virgo. I think Virgo's energetically in terms of our ability to work, in terms of our ability to focus, and the distractions around us have been piling up. And I think that that's happened since Neptune was in opposition to Jupiter. So when Jupiter was in Virgo, see it's like three years now, four years now, Neptune was in opposition creating a lot of confusion in our lives and especially through partnerships. So now I feel like you're breaking away from that because there's Jupiter has like a a weak correlation with Virgo. It's a square. It's it doesn't like it anymore. So you're kind of dislodging yourself from that energy here. And I think it's happening now. Also, full moon in Virgo at zero degrees. Hey girl, hey, that happens on the 19th. So we'll do a special on that. And what that means is most likely you will get an opportunity to shine your freak flag you know, just, just let it shine. Okay. So now we're going to get into the tarot. I've been low key trying to pick cards, but I got distracted telling you about astrology. So what I'm doing is these are energy readings up here is a pick a card. So basically each of these cards is one of the elements, earth, air, fire, water. You can choose one to kind of get a gauge of which element is going to be most important for you in the next month. This is a chakra card, so it's going to be the chakra that is most impacted or important for us in the next month. And I got the Goddess Guidance Oracle cards. And I have a true love reading for those of you who want love. I am going to do a love reading for you guys, by the way. I think I explained it in the beginning. But it's a astrological love reading for Valentine's Day. And you guys are going to get one on YouTube as well. And... Um, yeah, pretty exciting. So go check that out. And But we'll get a little taste test here. And then we have a uh, Arcana card here. And then finally one more Oracle card. I'm extra. And your reading is long, just like Sagittarius. Mm, lots to say. I had tea, so I'm a little bit, a little bit amped up. It was, it was black tea, so it has caffeine in it. Okay, so let's take a look at your cards. I wonder if I'm going to do a, I think I'll do a live, maybe. So here is your chakra for this month. So you have the root chakra. So you're adjusting in terms of where you live or in terms of how you're living right now. There's opportunities for improvement and there's opportunities for you to go forward in a certain direction that will improve your foundation. So it's either remodeling your house or buying new furniture, improving in some way for some of you, elective moving, like choosing to move, improving the situation. In fact, many of you who want to improve your living situation, you should be on the lookout to move before December when Jupiter moves into Capricorn. Jupiter's in our fourth house. So this is a, a good time for you to make some pretty big change or shift. The next message is our... Uh, this is the higher arcana, um, and we have the uh, the judgment. Ooh, that's that's wild. Big decisions about relationships with all those transits in Pisces, right in your seventh house that I showed you. Unpacking emotions, making decisions about relationships. Also, Jupiter in our fourth house really improves our relationships with family members. Sorry about the beeping. So real improvement in Ceres in the fourth house. Here, I want to show you guys. So Ceres is in the fourth house. She's the mother energy. There's like a really loving energy that is that you that is available to you at this time. So relationships that may have gone off kilter with be it romantic relationships or family relationships, those are really improving and your ability to talk with people about things is is really they're much more open you know when you talk to someone and never, the energy's just screwed and no matter how much even both people try it can't get on the same page sometimes that's energetic right and so i feel like at this time there's this opportunity to reconsider rethink your roots and rethink 
the direction that you're going is very much like mind over matter Virgo, you know, like very full energy, very Ur Uranus is heading into our ninth house. We're getting ready for to think about things differently. And that's cool, like an open minded Virgo energy. Hey, girl. Hey, how about that? OK, so we have four energies uh, for the elements and you can choose one to do pick a card or you can take them all on. We're going to just see what area of your life is affected how this month. So first we have King of Cups again, uh, King of Water in our water energy. So I feel like there's a really good dose of compassion and understanding. The King of Wands, the problem with the King of Wands, the reason that I got so into explaining it to you, my problem with that is overstepping personal boundaries where someone may not end a relationship and it could be platonic it could be a different like friendship whatever someone hanging around holding their opinion but still like in f sticking around but not being satisfied by who you are it's like why are you staying there and trying to covertly manipulate the situation if you don't like it leave that kind of energy and this king of cups in some way is very tolerant and understanding of your process virgo and i feel like this king of cups is going to facilitate the understanding that the king of wands couldn't now they could be men or women whatever but there's this kind of sympathetic understanding and an ability to give a person freedom to make their decisions. And I feel like that King of Wands has been with Virgo for a minute, like two years. So it's just like that Jupiter opposition Neptune that I mentioned before from 2014. I feel like there's been these long winded energies that have like really kind of been with us in a way. And it could have manifested as an actual person, a man you know who keeps on, you know, trying to persuade you. It's like almost having a friend who has a certain religious belief who like smiles at you in a condescending manner when you talk about your stuff, astrology, but like low key, they want you to convert to their religion. So like it's, it can't, it's sometimes it's okay, you know, cause it's from their perspective, they're just trying to save your soul or whatever. And that's okay too. That's a compassionate thing, but sometimes it gets into that area of you don't want to be reminded that you're like a heathen s sinner or something that you're a bad person it's weird to be around people who kind of low-key think that about you huh so it may not be a religious person in fact i don't think it is i just use like the stereotypical kind of you know it's the person who kind of shows up on the scene and in some way wants to convert you to their way of doing things and rather than accept you that's the king of wands in this situation so this King of Cups in some way gets involved and, and, and harmonizes the situation. I feel like this person kind of really, um, in a quiet way, just with their presence says, okay, enough is enough. Like let the Virgo do their own. The next energy represents the earth. Ooh, we got the 10 of earth. Good girls and boys. Okay, so we have the 10 of earth representing mercury in virgo hey girl hey <laughs> and so um i have mercury in virgo yes <laughs> so anyway so we have this um confidence financial strength loyalty this is a huge card of loyalty and family as a part of who we are and so i feel like this month you will even if it's just with the feminine energy remember at the beginning of the reading was that six of cups even if it's just the feminine energy, it's so good and so solid that you it's unquestionable loyalty that's with you and financial strength. So it's like you have it pretty, pretty strong here, Virgo. The next element that we're going to take a look at is the air suit. And this is five of air. It's just like you have to face. You've been letting people in for all this time and i think that you have to face the fact that that was a fallacy that was a that was a you just have to face the fact that maybe you made a bad decision about one or two people or whatever and you have to kind of um accept the fact that you're not going to 
make the right decisions all the time, which is pretty scary because you want to trust your own abilities to make decisions. But I'm guessing that at the time that you were making a decision, you didn't know the things that you know now, so you did the best with what you were given. I also feel like this month, because everybody's whiling out and Virgo's sort of solid, I feel like you, this is not a time to convey to other people and try to persuade other people. They're just not going to get what you're about or what's going on. And then the last suit is the fire suit. Let's see what we get. And we have the two of fire vision. So it's just Virgo knows where to go. You just know. And the big part of that is sticking to where you want to go and applying it and going there. And it depends on how strong your character is, depends on your other transits, how they interact together. But I feel like you in some way are meant to kind of stick to your guns and do your thing and ride out the energy and kind of set your nets wider so that the the reason that you're feeling constriction is you're, that your nets are too narrow. And with Uranus moving into the ninth house in Taurus, your, your nets are going to become a lot wider. You're going to have innovative nets. You're going to find different ways of making things happen in your life. Um, so the reason that you're feeling constriction is that you've, it's kind of a, a, a paradox, right? Because on the one hand, Virgo wants to honor the relationships and be loyal to the people that they have in their lives. But sometimes those people are, we outlive each other or sometimes there is like um, th the people that are in those circles have limited scope, limited ability to understand a part of our life. And so out of loyalty, we kind of maybe are resistant to opening ourselves up a bit more towards the world. And because we're so loyal, the loyalty, it's like, I got to be loyal to these people but if it's not working for you if it's if those people are not able to comprehend and vibe with the direction that you're going the di the direction of your vision then you need to cast wider nets you really do and i feel like if you have a strong enough character and if this king of cups shows up strong enough then you'll be able to in some way double down on the loyalty you do have and you have to have this unapologetic attitude towards things. It's like, yeah, you're at the top. You got really lucky with some really good transits. So without being abrasive, without being confrontational, just do you, Virgo. Because like the thing is that the direction that you're going is very empowering. So take care of the things that matter and just sloth off the things that, you, that don't. And if it is someone who's in your inner circle with whom you're trying to encourage or help them understand the direction you're going and they just don't get it, don't sloth them off, but maybe know how to give them attention without allowing their prejudices to, uh, or limited knowledge, ignorance, rather, maybe not prejudice, maybe more ignorance affect you. Because if you, like, for example, if you tell your great grandmother about, um, your, iPhone app that you're building, you know, and she's like, well, that's a waste of money. That's, <laughs> that's something you don't need. She won't understand the mechanics of social media and all these things. Maybe like she won't understand some of the things that she's, she's not informed. And so therefore you don't have to sloth off, sloth off your great grandmother, but know the limitations of the d interactions with the people you're dealing with and still honor them as your friends and your family and whatever. But also understand that there's a finite limit to that. So, okay. So three Oracle cards and then manifestation game. So we have serendipity. I love this card. Okay. So serendipity is like when things happen at specific times, you have to get into the flow of acceptance and tolerance and be willing to make it really active choices about closing the door on some things and welcoming things in. Don't try to force or direct the energy Virgo. This is really about you vibing with the environment around you and going where the energy is good and not really paying attention where the energy is not so good. The Goddess Guidance Oracle card is Demera. The guide, 
guiding children. You are good at helping, counseling, and healing children. Use your skills to help children now. So this is in some way or another. Now, if you don't have kids around you, then this can be animals. This can be any kind of gentle spirits that you are kind of being given the opportunity to nurture and to care for. I feel as though some of the people that you have been helping have turned condescending towards you. You know, it's like, it's very common that when people help each other, this, there's this kind of, the response is very like antagonistic. So be careful who you help Virgo. So I feel like you're shifting away from maybe like an older energy where you helped people your own age, older people who turned around and kind of begrudged you for it almost towards helping more innocent energies, energies that are, you know, um, uh, more grateful and have less of an ego about it. It's a whole thing. Like when you help people, you have to be careful with it psychologically triggers many people, you know, um, and so and so people lash out or they feel a certain type of way. And so uh, all sorts of drama can happen when you're helpful towards others. And so maybe at this time, it's like a shift towards a more innocent time in your life in which you're kind of able to affect positive change in the world around you, but not necessarily caught up. I feel as though there's been a little bit of backlash for your good efforts and your or consistent support of a person, a group of people, whatever. And I feel like you are turning towards a more innocent energy that's more receptive, receptive to the help rather than the old energy that now has gotten in their own feelings and <laughs> is up on their soapbox, right? Here is the last card for today. We have Rebirth, yay, just like the fool I told you in the solar plexus. That fool at the beginning of the reading was the, was the um, similar energy or this. And this is actually very similar. Shoot, what am I saying? All of these cards... So you're kind of regenerating. Many of you guys, um, it's the new year, right? We have the new year um, in February, February 4th, the new moon. It's a rebirth time. You get to reinvent yourself, Virgo, and it's nobody's business but yours. And I think that you're really creating for yourself like a new image. I had the vision of like you changing your hair, like dyeing your hair, doing something completely different with it. Um, maybe just get a wig if you're not ready for a big change. Wigs are so fun and so accept, uh, accessible now. So go get a new wig if you're not ready for a huge change. And yeah, I hope you guys are having a wonderful February. This looks really, really good. It's very much like, I think Virgo's got their groove back. Maybe that's what we'll call the video. Anyway, so my manifestation game works this way. If you've watched the whole video, you get to play. And um, it's either manifestation or divination. So manifestation means that we're playing a little magical game in which you can set the conditions. If I win, this is going to happen. If Varush wins, this is going to happen. If we both tie, this is going to happen. Now, if, if uh, you want to play divination, you can also ask, will I get that job? So you can say, if I win, I will get the job. If Varush wins, I won't get the job. And then if we tie, I'll get the job, but there'll be some kinds of conditions, something like that. So you get to set your own rules, but we're going to play the game right now. It's rock, paper, scissors, rock, paper, scissors. So I got scissors. So I hope that you got something that you wanted out of this. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Stay tuned for your other videos. I will talk with you soon. Take care, Virgo. Bye.